Hi, I'm Suzanne Zantop, and I was the second artistic director of the Hartford Dance Theater, succeeding Michelle White in 1984. At the time, we were doing a spring show with modern and jazz and some ballet variations, and at Christmas time, we were doing what we called our Christmas concert. Well, the Christmas con between the Christmas concert and the spring show, we were leaving out most of our community dancers who were older and who did jazz and modern and even some Renaissance dance. So we decided that there needed to be something for them to do in the fall that would give uh, showcase their talents. So the company manager at the time, Mary Housem, and I went to Marie Hopkins, who was director of cultural events, and we asked her if we could have a slot in October to do a Halloween show. And Marie was concerned that it was going to not be child friendly. And we said, all right, well, then it became the three of us working on it. And Marie and talked to some uh, educators and child psychologists and where we should go. And we developed a sketchy outline of the story. Then we went to Nanette Levix, now Arciaga, who was doing modern and jazz for us. And we asked her if she'd be willing to do uh, a program at Halloween and she said sure. So we enlisted her and then we enlisted Bill Price who was our lighting designer and technical designer and he brought in his student Todd Mayan to work with us and Galen um, Maestros uh, worked with us in the beginning on this with costumes and props and sets and we were able to get together six dancers we kept it simple and Nanette chose the music and I wrote the words that the, the script or storyline that goes over the, uh, the show itself. Now it evolved in 86. We decided that it perhaps could be in the attic, that Harriet would be looking for a costume. So uh, set-wise, we discovered that that didn't work as well and that we were limited. So we decided in 87 to move it into the basement and suddenly then Harriet, this adventuresome girl who's a little bored, a little afraid of things, afraid of her own shadow, um, her mother convinced her to go into the basement then and the point of the show was not just to showcase our modern and jazz dancers but also to show from a child's perspective how you can overcome your fears. So when she discovers these things, she's always frightened, at least in the early versions, she's always frightened by what she sees. But then she's incorporated into the choreography and becomes part of her fear and overcomes that. So by the time we get to Thriller at the end, we see her just reveling in this and the mother sees at the end a difference. Now, the music that we used, and that's what's been interesting, looking back at these, other than Thriller, is generally contemporary to the time that it was being produced. So when I listen to the 1986, the original version, there's music on there that I had not heard in probably 40 years. And that's the interesting thing for me, is that this is a community group that we were taking on the things that were important to our community, things they needed to do, uh, ways of making the arts grow in Hartford County, which has always been a challenge and continues to be a challenge to this day. So Harriet, to me, the fact that you're still doing it almost 40 years later is just an amazement to me, and I, I couldn't be happier. It's one of the, the highlights of, if people ask me, what did you do in your life you were proud of, one of the things is working with the Hartford Dance Theater. So hi, I'm Bambi Johnson, and I am the current director of Harriet's Happiest Halloween. I have been the director since 1996. Um, I also have been writing the script since then, um, with the exception of one year in there. So for 23 years, um, Harriet has been my child. So many personal things have come out of this show as well. Not only do all of these students and these dancers and these choreographers touch my heart and stay with me forever. Some of them have come through the program as at, through an audition. They danced with us for years and then they go off to college, they come back and they become a choreographer with me. So 
they have really, really become a part of my life. Um, I started dating my husband during Harriet's Happiest Halloween, and um, Evo was actually part of the very first cast and part of the very first brainstorming session to create Harriet's Happiest Halloween. All the characters that I work with and the storyline are based off of Suzanne Zantop's char original character. Um, I do write a fresh script every year. Um, with the exception of one year I've been involved with Harriet's for, it's at 23 years now. This show has gone through a lot of transformations. When we first started it, it was starting to become scary. Um, and the, the cast was older. They were all high school graduates um, and adults with a few sprinkling of high school seniors maybe. And the show was starting to take on a darker side. It was getting scary. We had Freddy Krueger involved. And at some point we decided, you know what? The original concept of this show was that it, the target audience was um, like six to 12 years old. So we backed it down at that point and we, we went back to entertaining the kids and we made it a little bit more light and um, fun. So that was the biggest transition that I saw throughout the years. So we went from being, um, from being a little bit scary um, to getting really dark and scary and almost just geared toward adults and teenagers. And then we decided, no, 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 we need to go back to the original concept. So um, there, are, there are points that make little kids jump, but basically we don't want to terrify the little ones. We want to entertain them. So moving forward, it's all about keeping Harriet's Happiest Halloween fresh and updated and exciting, selling out the theater. Speaking of which, this, this lovely theater that I love with all my heart is going to be renovated. Um, we can't wait to see the new toys we get to play with and the new resources that, that will bring us. Um, but this theater is the absolute best theater ever for Harriet's Happiest Halloween. It's completely immersive. The kids love this show. The kids on the stage love doing it. Um, so I just want her to keep selling out the theater, um, stay fresh, and just go on forever. Um, when I was four years old, my parents took me to see my first show on Broadway, um, and it was Beauty and the Beast, and we were really, really far back up in the balcony, and I kept looking up at what was going on, and then finally the theater went dark, and from right behind me, the center spot just like came on, and I turned around, and I thought it was magic. I thought it was actually magic making what was happening on stage real. It was obviously the dust from the theater just falling through the light, but um, I mean, I was four years old and it's one of the most vivid, vivid memories that I have and I've always wanted to make that magic. Uh, so I actually grew up coming to see Harriet's Happiest Halloween uh, and then I had also been dancing since I was four years old. Uh, so growing up to come see the shows and see the other shows put on by Hartford Dance Theater um, really made me want to actually try joining in once I was old enough. Uh, so yeah, and then also, I mean, I've also always loved music theater and theater in general, so. Wow, okay, that is a, a loaded question. Um, I actually started performing in theater um, when I was six years old. I did my very first show with my dad. We did Annie together. Um, and ever since then, I've been dancing and singing, and um, I actually majored in college in music theater, got my BFA from Elon University in 2000. Don't count the years of how old I am, um, but it's, um, it's been something that's been a part of my life uh, for as long as I can remember. Bambi approached me to do it a few years back um, for um, the first tap piece, which actually was one of the most challenging pieces I had to do for Harriet's was a black light piece um, because you couldn't see their feet. <laughs> and in tap, um, you know, being able to see the tap motions and everything is, is and steps is kind of a big part of it. Um, but I've done it for years. Um, this would have been the fourth. 
and um, I saw it the year before she asked me and just fell in love with it. Um, I had started doing things for Harper Dance Theater, so I was really interested in being a part of, of Harriet's. I love Halloween. I thought it would be a lot of fun um, to work with the kids um, surrounding Halloween. So that's Bambi again. Um, I took a class of hers um, and she needed a sub so I taught those classes for her and then she saw the choreography that I did in those classes and she's like so have you ever thought about choreographing you know for shows and stuff like that and she brought me in for Harriet's carnival and that was I think 12 years ago yeah it's 12 years <laughs> okay how long has Harriet's been in my life? Um, we, my family moved from New York to Maryland in 1996, and I want to say by the next year, 1997, I started seeing the show. Um, so I was seven years old. I auditioned, I think the age at that time was 12, and was in the show right away, and all the way through high school. And then I went to college and I literally just disappeared from Hartford County for a solid four years. But as soon as I came back, so um, not 2012 when I graduated, but by 2013, um, I had started choreographing and have been doing so since. I think when everything comes together, as you envisioned it as a choreographer on stage, that's probably like the best moment because there's so many people involved in a production of Harriet's or any of the shows we do here. And um, so you have a, you're a choreographer and you know you have this idea in your mind of what you want it to look like, but then there's the costumer, there's the lighter, the, the lighting people, there's the, the you know the set design, and sometimes you know everybody has a little bit of a different vision, not necessarily the choreographer's vision. So when everything comes together and it looks exactly like how I pictured it to look in my head, I think that's the coolest moment. Um, within Harriet's, the, the moment that did it for me when I understood that I had, when, well, when I realized that I understood the job um, was the year that I got to do the comic book superheroes piece um, because it was, it was the most fun thing I had ever put together in my life. I typically live way, way, way over there in artsy parts of land. And um, Harriet's provides a very different atmosphere and purpose. So I was able to create something that was fun and energetic and the kids, they screamed while the dance was happening and that's the goal. The goal is for the reaction and for the excitement. and. I was able to do it, and that was a really big moment for me. I guess this was maybe my first or second year in the show, and so I was like a little kid at that point, and Kristen Neville choreographed this crazy, like, kind of contemporary, kind of jazz, kind of just general Harriet's terror um dance to the beautiful people and they were gargoyles and they actually like sat on the edge of the stage and just like and they like snapped their heads around different ways and um more or less i remember seeing it in the studio and was like wow that's cool and then seeing it during tech and being like yeah i want to do that it was actually a piece that mckenzie choreographed a couple of years ago um, it was a point piece and they were like, I don't think they were ghosts. They were like screaming ghost things. I don't remember what they were. Mackenzie Horseman did uh, Banshees and they were um, on point, but they were like ghosts. They, well, they were Banshees. Um, but with the, the way the lighting was done and the choreography and it was one of those pieces where the dancers were all in and it, it was super cool. I loved watching it, like I literally watched it every night. So my favorite, uh, we've done it a few times, is a theater uh, setting, so kind of where we are now. But, uh, you know, making it a little more creative, like backstage, 
Um, and Harriet, you know, comes across different creatures like bats and like ghosts and things. Um, and we had a really good sidekick when we did theater. Uh, we did Edmund Booth, uh, this haunted the theater uh, here. Uh, and then for a new setting, there's, we've done a lot of the settings that I kept thinking of. Um, one we haven't done in a long time is doing kind of like a pumpkin patch farm kind of setting um, where you have scarecrows and things like that. So, I mean, it might be a fun one to revisit. Harriet's, which was a junkyard. Um, it was really cool because it had like, there was like half of a car there and you know, it was just really neat how they decorated the set. Um, and I think that Harriet, I don't remember why she was there, but um, there was a French cat. Evo's voice was a French cat. Um, and it was, and he was like, I guess he was like a junkyard cat, but it was a really, really neat set. And for, ha for that being the first time that I had ever seen it in my whole life, which is crazy because I grew up here and I never saw it. But, um, it was just really neat how they decorated the set. I really liked um, how, how they did that. As a kid watching the show, my favorite setting was the mall. It was one of the years where we had, like, not we, I wasn't part of that then. Um, they had a multi-level um, stage up here and platforms, and it was just, you came in and it didn't look like a stage. And, you know, of course, I was a dancer. Um, and so it it challenged my expectations of what was going to happen and then the very first thing they did was a glow-in-the-dark dance and I was like what is happening this is the best thing ever and my favorite as a performer would have been either the TV which was my very very first year when I was a powder uh, no I was Mojo Jojo <laughs> um, and it was like really stretchy fabric and the TV opened and each of the shows and characters came out of the TV and that was really cool. And with the similar type of concept that was done in a museum with paintings, like the Scream painting and um, they one of the Diga ballerina, I think the four girls painting, yeah, one of those. Um, I, if I could pick a new setting, we would be out in space. Yes. And I would like to choreograph the actual rocket launch takeoff. In, in case anyone wants to take note of oh, that. <laughs>We are missing you, our audience, so much this year for Harriet's Happiest Halloween, but be sure the magic never leaves us. It's always here for you to come back to. Dancers who are normally with us, we miss you so much. We know that the magic of Halloween is so important to you, and trust us, we'll help you find it again next year. So to every dancer, and every choreographer, and every tech, and anybody who has ever worked with me on Harriet's Happiest Halloween. I'm gonna tell you what I say at the beginning of every performance. You are a part of me and will always be a part of me and I am who I am because you have walked into my life. I miss this show so much this year. I just can't wait to see your beautiful faces again. So having said that, happy Halloween.